Sen. Corelli and McGuire. What have we got here? Got us a stiff. It's Bill Reardon. Who's Reardon? He's a cop out 87th. When a cop gets killed, fundamentally it's no different than when anyone else gets killed. Except the cop is a symbol. A symbol, you hear me? The newspaper guys think we're always special after a cop killer because it's a personal matter. A matter of revenge. You can't let a cop be killed because a cop is a symbol of law and order. You take away that symbol and you get animals in the street. We got plenty of animals in the street right now. Corelli, you're in charge, Corelli. That news hawk, Hank Miller, he's a friend of yours. A cop killing, he'll eat it up. That's what the front pages are for. And you're in charge of keeping him off my back. That's it. You don't need any instructions. Go to work on the files and go to work on the streets. But bring me that cop killer. McGuire. Yes, sir? You'll inform Mrs. Reardon. Not tonight. Let her get her night's sleep. It's easier informing them in the morning. Yeah. Real easy. Informing them in the morning. Yes, sir. Weirden. He was your partner, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He was my partner and my friend. We went to school together. A lot of good times we had. I heard a rumor over at the squeeze-in hmm? about a guy that came in drunk and disorderly, waving a 45, celebrating he was going to get married. It was a rumor, so I let it lay. It was so doggone hot. What? It was a couple of nights ago, there was a guy by the name of Clark. Real nice guy, they said. He was celebrating, showing off with a 45. I was kind of stalling on the checkup because, like I said before, it was so doggone hot. Maybe we ought to check on that right now, Mike. Look, I'll do the check. You ease up for half an hour, I'll meet you at the squeeze. Okay? Okay, come on. Yeah, ease up for a half an hour, Corelli. Go tuck in your sweetheart. <laughs> if he don't tuck in his sweetheart every night, it ain't Steve Corelli. Why don't you shut up? Look, Willis, how peculiar can a guy get? Latching himself onto a dummy. A deaf and dumb broad. Oh, way to criticize. All right, maybe Corelli's girl can't talk or hear, but she's plenty smart. Writing for some kind of magazine, she makes more dough than you do. Well, so what? And besides, she's prettier than you are. Stuck on a case. No, no, I can't stay. H honey, I shouldn't be here now. I only dropped in for a minute. No, no food, thanks. Okay, just one drink, a short one, then I gotta get out of here.
was supposed to go to the beach tomorrow? I have to back out on that, too. They killed the cop tonight. They killed Bill Ridd. Go meet Mike McGuire. He's working on it right now. Frank Clark? Yeah, I'm Frank Clark. What do you want? It's the police. Open up. Police? Let me see your badge, Mac. All right. Come on, mister. Open up. What's the matter, Mac? What's the beef? Just a few questions, mister, and I want some straight answers. Honey, who is it? Yeah, it's a guy from the cops who wants to ask a few questions. Who's that? Who's that? Yeah. That's my wife. That's who's that. What time is, what kind of a time is this to break into a man's apartment? We just got married today. So a, a fine time you picked to come asking questions. What is it, Mac? What do you want? You own a 45? Yeah. Well, how'd you know that? You were flashing it all over the squeeze in a couple of nights ago. Oh, oh, then I was, I was just living it up a little. Hey, look, I haven't used that gun since I was in the army. I ain't even got bullets for it. Where'd you get it? Well, like I told you, it's a souvenir from the army. Let's have it. Where is it? Uh, it's an address here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll get it. It's a fine time you picked to come asking questions. What kind of a McGilla is this in the middle of the night yet? A cop was killed tonight. That's the McGilla, and he was killed with a forty-five. Look, I ain't even been out of the house tonight. Man, this is my marriage night. Are you, are you kidding? Look, I ain't used that gun since the army, just like I told you. How long gonna have to take it? Okay, take it. Who needs it? Will you get out of here, please? You guys can get yourselves in a pack of trouble with your souvenirs from the army, but if your story shapes, I'll see that they go easy on you. Especially seeing as how you're a newly married man. night he picks to come asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, Mike. Well, how's Teddy? Fine. How'd you do? I stank. Delivered a 45 down to the lab. It's an army job, but don't forget. What's from the precinct? They stink, too. They're going over the files now with the leads. Nothing shapes. Time for the stooly bit, huh? Yeah, I was just thinking. All right, Mr. Corelli, what'll it be? Beer. Hey, is Danny Gimp been around? Yeah, he's been around. Give him a message, huh? Tell him I'd like to see him, will you, John? Tell him it's important. I'll tell him, Mr. Corelli. Well, it's time to knock it off. Time to pack up. I'm a married man. I'm going home. You sit and drink beer, kid. You sit and drink beer, and you just see if you can get drunk enough to wipe out that picture of Reardon with his brains splashed all over the sidewalk. Me, I can't.
about time you got home. Bill Reardon got knocked off. Bill Reardon? Three slugs in the back of the head. They found him laying there like garbage outside some crummy, closed-up movie palace. Why Reardon? I mean, was it in the line of duty or something? Somebody resisting arrest? It was in the line of nothing, as far as we know. A, a cop gets shot in the street. Who knows what motives are pumping inside somebody's black heart? Sure. You want to be cops. You want to be heroes. Nobody forced you into it. The line of work you picked out for yourselves. Why? Why? Hey, take it easy, will you? You know, I always try to be careful. <laughs> oh, sure, careful. You'll wind up stretched out one day, just like Bill Reardon. Oh, come on, take it easy, will you? Sick to death of it. Sick to death of being a cop-type widow. Sick to death of your coming home at all hours, going away at all hours. The hottest night of the year, and you're fresh and clean like a daisy in a meadow. You smell sweeter than all the daisies in all the meadows all over the world. Oh, you're wet. You're oozing wet. You used to like it when I was oozing wet. Well, I don't like it now. Fancy lady. You coming to bed? No. Well, I gotta catch some sleep. Wake me early, very early. What's very early? Six o'clock. Six o'clock? Are they working you a double shift now? I gotta break the news to Maggie Reardon. I have to get to her before the newspapers hit. You don't want to come to bed? Yes, I'm sure. And they're going to give him an inspector's funeral. And you and the kid will be taken care of. Part from the pension fund, part from the welfare fund. You won't have to worry too much, because there'll always be a little something coming in. Excuse me, Mike. Yeah. Got it. Steve, the ballistics on that Frank Clark 45, it's clean. Yeah, that's what Mike figured. Well, Mr. Kling, in person. Feel right handsome out of uniform. Hey, it's your day off. What are you doing here? I like it here. How are we doing, Mr. Crowley? Pretty bad. What do we got here? Well, we got the coroner's report on Rid. Don't tell us nothing we don't know. Report on the slugs. Don't tell us nothing except that we catch up with the right 45. Report on seven different 45s right. the boys picked right. up. Right. Nothing. Take care of Maggie? Yeah. That clock kid drew a blank. Uh, it figures, and I'm glad. I pass the word to take it easy on him. I mean, about the no permit for an army souvenir business. He's a newlywed. Let him start with a clean slate. His troubles are ahead of him. Where's Dave? Now he's out in some cockeyed leave. Here. He was thoughtful and considerate. He was respectful and God-fearing. He didn't have an enemy in the world. Everybody loved my boy. Everybody loved it. <laughs> Nobody hated Dave Foster. Not even the rats he stuck away in the pen. They thought of him like a friend. They would ask for him. They'd make confessions to him. And when they got out, they'd come to him for handouts. Nobody hated Dave Foster. Well, what goes? 
There's some mud here. The heat dried it fast, but it left the perfect heel print. Right where the cartridges were. Ah, two Remingtons together, huh? And they're 45s. Well, finally we're getting a break. You found these shells right near that heel print? Yeah, the right foot. What do you got for me, Jenkins? Uh, not too much, Mr. Corelli. Got a partial heel print right shoe. We figured a guy for a heavy tread and a stiff walk. The uh, heel has been repaired, not too good either. Oh, Sean is the heel. The uh, third nail from the right's bent almost in two. Oh, that's it, Mr. Gurley. That's it. That's it. We're not magicians. We can only work with what we've got. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Sergeant. The man we want has got a right shoe. He's got a heavy tread and a straight walk. The shoe's been repaired. It's got an O'Shaughnessy rubber heel. The third nail from the right on the heel is bent almost in two. That's it. That's it. That's nothing. There must be a million men with O'Shaughnessy heels, including me. Yeah, and a man figures to have two, three pairs of shoes. Go find a bent nail out of three million pairs of shoes. I mean, just in this city. Okay, fellas, that's all I know. Two cops in two days. Two cops in two days. My paper's got a hunch it's a teenage hood. One of the gang kids. Your paper? You mean you? We're playing it up big, Lieutenant. I wish you'd play it up small, Mr. Miller. It only inflames the rest of the nuts. That's your theory, Lieutenant? A nut? Yeah, that's my theory. A psycho, or an idiot, or a hophead, out on a cop-killing binge. Reardon and Foster were a team. The boys have practically completed a check on every man they ever arrested, all clean. Reardon's wife tells us that Bill had no personal enemies. Foster's mother tells us Dave had no personal limits. So why not one of these crazy gang kids swinging on the weed, wants to be a real big guy, can knock off cops? Because they've been in line lately. Even the toughest ones, those Grovers, they've been in line lately. They need trouble like you need two holes in both your heads. Thanks, Lieutenant. You've been most cooperative. Hi, Steve. Hey. Hiya, Hank. I want to talk to you, Steve. Hey, Hank. You know, you ought to lay off the lieutenant. He's got his hands full. That's his job. You got a job, I got a job. And I want to talk to you. Okay, but some other time, huh? I'm full up right now. Full up, right to the gizzard. Whatever you say, Steve. Yeah, we'll talk as soon as I get some time. Hello, Hank. Hi, Mark. This is all we've got left. All the arrests that Ridden and Foster made, this is all we have left. Oliver Flanagan and Louis Ortiz. Okay, you take Flanagan. I'll take Ortiz. I got a lead on him. He's a junkie. I know. Well, that should fit in with the lieutenant's theory. Maybe. What's the lead? Danny Gimp phoned in. He knows who I'm looking for. You picked a tough one, kiddo. Why? You're a married man, remember? Well, so you look kind of beat. Why don't you go home and hit the sack? You know, I think you've got a very good idea there. Many pods, Inspector. Hi, huh, Inspector. Murder. Got what I want, Danny? Yeah. What do you need with him? You think he killed them cops? He didn't kill no cops. Not Louie. He just come out from three years and stir. Well, he's been out a month. Well, he ain't looking to go back. <laughs> Maybe he got sore at the guys that sent him up. Oh, no, Inspector. All they're interested in is a nice, easy broad here and there. But mostly it's mainline stuff. <laughs> For the veins. <laughs> you know where he is? Sure I know where he is. Well, come on, let's have it. He's holed up at Mama Lucy's. He healed? 
Mama Lucy says no. Okay, Danny, thanks a lot. That's all? Thanks a lot, Danny. There'll be 20 bucks waiting for you at Jenny's Bar and Grill. I'll call up and tell her it's okay. Thank you. Very much, Inspector. Hello, Jenny. Corelli here. Just take me for 20 bucks for Danny Kemp, will you? Thanks a lot. Hey, Clay. Yeah, I'm driving to Mama Lucy's? Sure. Take care of it, will you? Come on, will you? You ever been there? Nope, but I heard of the joint. Pretty wild, huh? Oh, I don't know. You know, they got a hotel upstairs, a bar downstairs, fat broads behind the bar, slim B-girls in front of the bar. You know, everything's ship -shaped, legal like that. I'm getting married. I say, I know you got girl. I feel in my heart you get married. Mama Lucy Hart never lies. I say there's enough heart here for occasional little error, huh? No, never. Oh, Stevie, <laughs> always with the jaws. Ah. Hey, how about a little kiss for my friend here? Too young. Too young? You're never too young. Uh, oh, it's the master guy. I like them experienced. What do you want? Drink? Mm -mm. A nice little girl talk? No. Nice man to talk. Another man talk? A guy named Louis Ortiz, he's upstairs. He is upstairs. He's upstairs. Please, no trouble. No trouble from Mama Lucy. Have I ever made you any trouble? No. Okay, then. Where is he? To a seat. In the back. Mama Lucy wants you. What the? What's going on here? Stinks in here. Open that window. Why, right, what's with the party game, boys? Party games like this, sister. Oh, no. Cops. Who needs it? Stinks in here, too. Open that window. Hey, check his clothes and open that suitcase. Hey, what is it? He's my friend. Find anything? Nothing here. Hey! Hey! You got a gun? No, no, no gun. No gun, no gun. What's your name? Me Ortiz, Ortiz. Louis Ortiz? Yeah, yeah, me Louis Ortiz. How long has this guy been here? Four days. Four days? Are you sure of that? Nobody can be sure than me. I'm married to the bum. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's married to the bum. Come on, let's blow this chicken coop. Wow, I could use a drink. Come on. Mind if I sit down? Beat it, Lester. You old enough to be drinking in a saloon? That ain't no drink, Mac. That's ginger ale. Like something stronger? I can manage it. Rum and coke, Matt. What'll it be, Mr. Miller? Scotch and water for me and a rum and coke for my friend. Come enough. My name's Miller. Yeah, I heard. So what do you want from me, Mac? Just a little talk. What about? The Grovers. Hey, mister, why don't you go and buy somebody else a rum and coke, huh? What's your name, son? Don't son me, Daddy. My name's Rip. I mean your real name. What's it to you? No, I'm a reporter. A newsboy, huh? Well, now, so what do you want from me? 
Yes, sir, just a little talk, Rip. What about? Your gang, maybe. But I don't belong to no gang, newsboy. The Grovers? That ain't no gang, newsboy. That's a club. Understand? A social club. <laughs> well, how'd you like to see your social club publicized in the newspaper? Not a social club in the city ever got the full newspaper treatment. Uh, who needs a treatment? Anybody ain't heard of the Grovers ain't trying. Why they call you Rip? Ain't because I'm good with a blade. You mean you really use a blade? Hey, man, are you kidding? In this neighborhood, you don't carry a blade or a piece. You're dead. You're dead, man. What's a piece? A gun. You Grovers got a lot of these pieces, huh? Enough. Hmm. What kind? All kind. Now, you name it, we got it. What are you, fives? What's it to you? <laughs> nice gun, a 45. Yeah. Great, man, you know, big. But you guys don't really use these pieces. Well, you're only kids. Kids, huh? Hey, boy, you think these diddly bops are for fun? Now, you mess with the Grovers, see, and you find out. Even the cops. No, we don't, we don't look for no law trouble. No, we stay away, lest they bother us. They ain't been bothering you lately, huh? No. no. We got a treaty with the cops, see? I mean, they don't bother us, we don't bother them. Just no trouble at all, huh? Hey, Mac, no, 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 you know, you're a real louse track, ain't you? I mean, uh, uh, you're one of those real slimy troublemakers, huh? Now, wait a minute, I want to straighten you yeah, out. Yeah, no, I bet you do. Let me buy you another drink. Oh, man, I don't want another drink. I don't want this one. Pick up the car and then go back to the house. Maybe one good report, sir. Maybe Mike did better on that Flanagan than we did on Louis Ortiz. I'll talk to you later. So long. Take it easy. Alice? Alice? Seven detective squad, Detective Sergeant Havlin. Uh, hi, this is uh, Mike McGuire. Is Corelli there? No, he ain't back yet. Well, look, tell him on Flanagan there's nothing to it. He's got 100% alibi. He's in a hospital with a boil. What do you mean, where? Look, I'm going to sleep. Hang on, I'll sing you a lullaby. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. Well, look who's home. Where have you been? Stifling. So, where have you been? Why don't you have a beer? Thanks a lot. I think I will. Where have you been? Shopping. Did you buy me a present? Oh, would you like gum shoes? I bought me some presents for a change. Whew, it's hot. What'd you buy? Two dads. One thing I bought, you'll flip. A bathing suit. Oh, but brother, a bathing suit. Oh, bathing suit, huh? So, let me flip already. <laughs> no, 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 I know you. You'll just start up. Stop, will you? Come on, go model a suit. You'll be good? Uh, you just show me one dame that ain't dying to model a bathing suit, boy. You just show me. There's a bikini. Not you. 
Some people, maybe, but you, you start a riot. It's no bikini, but you'll flip. Okay, so I'm flipping already. Well? Wow. You like? It's terrific. Excuse me. just got shot. Kling got shot? Rumble outside the squeeze and you better get down here. Yeah, yeah, thanks. You're all gonna stay here until the right guy talks. Now, which one of you punks gunned the cop? Get back in line. Maybe the whole city figures it's open season on cops. Okay, you young punks, play it smart. But let's see how long the Grovers will last up under a cop shooting rat. We didn't shoot no cop. Sure not. He shot himself, huh? You think we're crazy? Shoot a bull, huh? This was a patrolman, not a detective. He was wearing a suit. So patrolmen don't go naked when they're off, do they? They wear suits. Man, we didn't shoot no cop. Well, somebody did shoot a cop, and I'm gonna hey, shake hey, it out hey, of you. Get out of you. Who's your talk, man? I talk. What's your name? Mom's there. What's your real name? Joe Sanchez. All right. What happened? A little skirmish is what. Why? Well, we got the word passed down. What word? Uh, you know, like a scout was out. No, I don't know. Scout. What started this rumble? Oh, well, now look, Dad. You call me Dad again and you'll be spitting teeth. All right, what do you want? What do you want to know? Why'd you jump a cop? A cop? Who jumped a cop? Joe, you keep playing it the way you're playing it and the Grovers are gonna be a social club that got desocialized in spades. It's a mistake. We didn't know he was a cop. Start from the beginning. We've been giving you trouble lately. No. We've been keeping the nose clean, no? That's enough with the prologue. Okay, today there's a guy snooping around in a bar, and he hooks one of our seniors, and he starts pumping him. Which senior? I forget. Who was the guy? What guy? The snooper. A newspaper guy, he said. What? He said his name was Miller, you know? I know him. So he starts asking, like, how many pieces we got? We got 45, so we don't like law, stuff like that there. Now, this senior, he's hip. He tips this guy, he's trying to mix the Grovers with the two bulls got blasted. So he's on a newspaper, that ain't good. I mean, with his ideas, he could stick it to the Grovers. So, uh, the senior comes back with his report. So we plan to scare this reporter before he goes printing this junk. Well, he goes to the bar and spread out, waiting. He comes out, and we jump him. Only he pulls a gun. So one of the boys plug him. Self-defense, man. Who? Oh. What one of the boys? Oh, one of the boys. Plugged him, thinking he was Miller? 
Well, sure. How are we supposed to know this guy ain't Miller? How are we supposed to know he's not a cop? That he ain't this Miller, huh? The senior's description will fit perfect. A tall, blonde, light suit, uh, no tie, collar on top of jacket, and dark brown straw hat. So, the wrong guy got burned. Who fired the shot? Who was the senior Miller talked with? Is he here? We got a list of every member of your social club. You know that, don't you, Sanchez? So why are you making a mountain, man? Why are you making a mountain? So we hit the wrong guy. So, OK, so we hit the wrong guy. It happens, don't it? It happens all the time. It happens even with cops. You got to admit that. Plenty of times the wrong guy gets hit. This happened before, it'll happen again. Plenty of times the wrong guy gets hit. Listen to me, Sanchez. All of you, listen to me. Your gang hasn't been giving us much trouble lately. That's Jake with us. Maybe it's a truce. Call it whatever you want. I don't think you guys can go around shooting people and get away with it. They're a bunch of hoods. A bunch of hoods, as far as I'm concerned. And a 17-year-old hood is just as dangerous as a 50-year-old hood. The only reason we haven't been bearing down on you is because you've been behaving yourselves. Well, today you stop behaving yourselves. Now, get them out of here. All of them. Book them. Conspiracy, concerted attack. Lieutenant? Uh, oh, oh, oh. The guy outside wants to talk to you. This is name's Miller. Tell him to drop dead. Yeah, yeah, all through with work. I can stay as long as you'll have me. Tomorrow. Rough. Hey, Mike, I've got lineup duty. Lineup duty. into an apartment. We know that. You just admitted it. So you must have had a reason for going in there. What do you say? The girls told us. What girls? Uh, a couple of chicks. What they tell you? To bust in. Why? Just like that. Like what? Like for kicks. Only for kicks? We don't know why we busted in the door. To uh, take something out of the apartment? Maybe. The girl told us nobody was there. What did you want to take out of that apartment? Well, no clothes, nothing like that. A couple of bucks, maybe, you know, like that. You were uh, planning a burglary then, is that right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. What did you do when you discovered the apartment was occupied? The lady screamed, so we run. Next case. Uh, Kingsbridge 1, William Willie Bronken. Patrolman picked up Bronken on Dixon and 69th. Bronken intoxicated going down the street shooting out lamppost fixtures. Take your hat off. 
What about her, Willie? I'm Willie to my friends. My friends only. What about it, Willie? What about what, pal? What about shooting lampposts, Willie? I got high. I shot out a few lights. Big deal. I'll pay for them. Big crime. Ain't you guys got anything else Where'd to do? Where'd you get the gun? My brother sent it home to me. Where's your brother? West Germany. He's a top kick. Do you have a permit? No, I don't. It was a gift. Big deal. A guy's brother sends a, a 45 home to him and everybody starts... You've confiscated your gun. It's in ballistics right now. So you confiscated it. So big deal. So it's in ballistics. So what? All right, smart guy. Even if you did nothing else, you violated the Sullivan Law. Do you know what that means? No, no, I don't know what it means, smart guy. What's it mean? You'll find out. Next case. Lieutenant, we'd like to question that man further. Sure. Hope you're not going to bat him around a little bit. I'll have him brought up in 317. Lieutenant, have you got any other 45 checkouts on your sheets? No 45s. And take it easy with Wee Willie. It's police brutality to bat a smart guy around. Yes, sir. Corelli, 87. You got a 45 report, a guy, William Bracken, playing cowboy shooting out lampposts? Right. Will you give it a comparison with the Reardon Foster killings at 87th, please? Right here, 317. Now, what am I got coming? Third degree? Easy. Take off your right shoe. What? Come on, take off your right shoe. I would like. Look, you guys got nothing on me. I want to see my lawyer. Don't you touch when me. When you're told to take off your shoe, take, take off your shoe. shoe. Punches, if you didn't have fences, you wouldn't be Shut so up. Shut I want up. Shut up. my lawyer. Keep quiet. Here you're a bunch of wise guys. You have badges. Take the badge off and I'll see you. John, let him sleep. He's a pest when he's up. Shit. I'll show him to see heal. Nothing wrong with the nails. McGuire, 87. Hi, Mike. Willis. You with Steve? Oh, yeah. How'd you know where to get hold of us? I'm a detective. I got ways. You're a very funny fella. I also got a confession downtown on the rookie clean. Kid Miguel Anselmo used the zip gun. Kid Ripper Xavier was the senior Miller talked to at the squeeze in. Thank you very much, teacher. You've always been a nice fella. Drop dead. You too, teacher. Who's that? It's Willis on Kling. They got a confession on the kid that used the zip gun. They know the kid that Miller talked to. They're holding the two of them and they're springing the others. Hey, how's Teddy? Which is great. You know, maybe we're neglecting our women folk. Maybe we ought to take them out in the town. You keep forgetting now when you're a husband. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Could happen to you. Could happen to the best of us. It's a good idea about going out. How about tonight? Okay, it's a date unless we get hung up. Corelli here. Thank you. Thank you very much. You! You tell Willie when he wakes up that it ain't polite sleeping with one shoe on. <laughs> yes, sir. So long, John. So long. Hey, Prima Donna! Come on, if we're gonna go out and have some fun, let's go on out and have some fun. In a minute, if I can ever get this zipper unstuck. You want a hand? I'll make out better without no. <laughs> hey, do you mind? May I please cut in on this gorgeous brunette? Yeah, yeah, sure. May I? Thanks a lot. Steve? Ooh. Please? Yeah, sure. Oh. There you go, Alice. Thank you. Shall we? Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry, Casanova, but you danced too close, man. Oh, no. No, you danced too close. 
I don't trust anybody with my Alice. Maybe I don't even trust my Alice. Hmm? Uh, look, kiddies, if we're going out, let's go out. These guys get dancing around the apartment. That's just where we'll end up in the apartment. You got a point there, sweetie. Let's go. Out. Oh, man, this Corelli, he's really bent on celebrating tonight. He's got a special reason for wanting to celebrate tonight. Oh, yeah? Special? Like what? Like I'm going to get married. What? I got a vacation coming up in two weeks. That's when me and Teddy's going to get married. Hey, you're my friends. You're the first ones to know. Well, you ain't really going to marry. Oh, Steve, Steve, that's wonderful. Oh, that's, that's great. Great. That's great. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Welcome to the bonds of matrimony, yeah. fellow idiot. And I'm going to be the first to kiss the bride in advance. All right, come on. Let's go on out and celebrate. Let's go. Let's get a move on. Come on, this party is strictly on me, too, man. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. Now, look, there's a few words of advice I want to give. Advice? Oh, yeah, I'm serious. Come on, girls, let's go. Uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard the story. A week, seven days and seven nights, nothing. And me, I pride myself on my squad. We've turned this town upside down, Lieutenant. We haven't turned up our cop killer, have we? We've got a psycho on our hands, sure as shooting. And that newspaper man's featuring in his front page stuff and won't lay off. I can get him a layoff, Lieutenant, if you'll just give me the word. You're not getting any word from me. It is front page stuff. It should be front page stuff. Two of our own boys blasted out of existence in the line of duty. If we don't come up with that cop killer, I'm... I'm putting in for my pension. Maybe I'm getting old. That's all, boys. I've never seen the skipper like this. You blame him? You gonna see the girlfriend? You got any objections? Easy, kid. We've all got our backs up. Give Teddy my love. I'm sorry. Drop dead. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. We punched every lead. We pushed around every hood in town. Well, you heard what the lieutenant said. We've got a psycho here. A psycho. You can't flush up a psycho pushing hoods around. Yeah, all right, all right. Somewhere in this weird, wide, wonderful city of ours, some crazy bird with a pink in his brain is oiling up his 45 for jungle hunting. His crazy brain wants cops, cops, cops. <laughs> strong for McGuire, didn't it, Kling? He was a smart cop, your friend McGuire. Lieutenant, let's try to do this just like a, a cop was killed. Impersonal, right? Okay. Four wounds. Three in the chest, one on the back of the head. He probably knew he'd be a dead pigeon before it was over. Nevertheless, he saw to it that he gave us lots of information. Like what? He scratched his assailant's face. So? We've got his blood. What's what? From the skin sample under McGuire's nails, we know the man is white, clean-shaven, dark-complected. Some hair samples show them to be from a beard because they're triangular with concave sides. Take a look. Highly paid. How do you know that? There was some head hair full of an expensive pomade and covered with metal dust. That particular pomade sells for two bucks a jar. All right. He's not over 50. And take a look at this chart. The diameter of the head hair is 
0.071. Now you can, just a second, you can check it against that graph. Yes, sir, but uh, this only shows that he was an adult. But there was a living root with pigmentation grains in the cortex. Thick, coarse hair, below 50. Also, he'd had a haircut in a singe recently because the hairs were curled, slightly swelled, and grayish in color. Now, it takes about 48 hours for cut hair to start growing again, so it wasn't so very long ago. Well, anything else? He was six feet tall. The blood drops in the sidewalk were long and narrow, which means he was moving fast. Now, the blood dripped from a height of about, let's see, two yards. Our chart on blood drops proves that right here. Holy mackerel. Well, since he was moving fast, I'd say that the wound was superficial. Can you tell where he was hit? Ballistics pried a slug out of a wall, so I'd say through the shoulder or just the neck. So you don't think he was hit bad enough to go to a doctor? Probably not. Any ordinary antiseptic would take care of it. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Lieutenant. Thanks. Don't thank me. Huh? Thank McGuire. Yeah. Go interview them. Go sit around with them. If the guy needed a croaker and he went to a croaker, the croaker would report it. That is, if the croaker were legit. If he was illegit, no report no matter what. Right, Steve? I thought Alice was going to be here. She get tired of waiting? I don't blame her. I got hung up. She go home? She say for me to meet her there. Okay, can I have a cold drink first? Yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. Thank you. This case is driving me out of my mind. It's bugging me. Bugging me. Foster, they were a team. Maybe some crazy stumble bum they worked over. Uh, but Mike, Mike never had nothing to do with reading and Foster. Never. They both got a book for a psycho. Cop hating nut. What if it ain't? Maybe. Maybe there was a pattern. Maybe there was some kind of a connection between the three of them. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I gotta see Alice. I gotta see Alice. What are you people doing about it? What are you doing? We're doing whatever we can. That's what we're doing. We're working on it every single blessed second. Every one of us. Easy, Steve. Easy. Yeah, easy. Sure you want to have a drink? No, no drink, thanks. This is not the first today. Well, who can blame you? Tell you a little secret. I'm a little high. It won't do you any harm. After all. How does it feel, something like this? Something like what? Investigating the death of your best friend. Weird it feels. I'll say this, Alice, you're taking it pretty good. I have to. I'd fall to pieces if I didn't. If I let go for one little minute, I crack. He's dead, Steve. He's gone. Yeah. Maybe I will have that drink. I'm 
hot. Ain't let up for a minute. If it would only rain. What have you people got on it? You know as much as we know. Any word from the doctors? I think he wouldn't go to a doctor. Mike should have killed him. No, no theories? No ideas? You got any? A cop hater. A crazy, rotten, twisted lunatic. That's my idea. Yours and everybody else's. You think different? I don't know what to think. Alice, Mike ever have anything to do with Ridden or Foster or both of them? What do you mean to do? They both worked out of the same house, didn't they? No, I mean on a personal basis. You know, off duty. No. Never come up here for a drink? Chew the fat? No, that I can say definitely. I mean, at least not here. What are you driving at, Steve? I don't know. I got some crazy ideas starting to spin around in my mind. Like what? Well, if it don't make sense, there's no sense talking about it. I'll let you know if it shapes. You let me know the minute it shapes? Whatever shapes? Yeah. That you can bet on. Yeah, especially the newspaper men. There's all kinds of newspaper men. There's a crazy kind to stir up trouble with punk kids. Look, I was trying. Maybe I was barking up the wrong tree, but my intentions were good. Sure, so a rookie cop winds up with a bullet in his neck. It was meant to be me, Steve. Better maybe it should have been. All right, better maybe it should have. I didn't mean that. I don't mind if you did. So I goofed. But you can't hang a guy for trying. Why did you try being a newspaper man instead of a cop for a change? That's what I'm trying to be right now. Check, pal. What do you want? Just want to buy you a drink? Check, pal. You got a customer. Maybe too good a customer in the mood to tie a little bag on. Where are you taking it? How about Mama Lucy's? Mama Lucy's? Well, as long as I'm still a bachelor. Come on. <laughs> Crazy asking for a nice quiet booth, huh? See, you crazy man. We've had a few splashes on the way here. Sure, he's a murder hot. Come on, boy. That's the table for my friend. Huh? Scotch and water for my friend. Water on the side, I'll have a gin and tonic. Make that a double. I'll tell you something, Steve. I respect you. Me? For what? Well, I'm getting back to this marriage thing. I, I hear she's... How do you say it? Handicapped. So what? So not tonight. I just mean, in my book, you're quite a man. Don't try to make anything noble out of me. Girl can't hear, she can't talk. So what? As far as I'm concerned, she can hear and she can talk. Yeah. Uh, what's the word? We communicate. We communicate all the way, if you know what I mean. I love her. And she loves me. Period. So don't try to make me out a hero. Not a hero, but quite a man. Flattery will get you anywhere. What's her name? Teddy. Theodora Franklin. Where'd she live? Why? Just want to send a gift up to her, that's all. One nineteen Riverhead. Hi, Hanky. Hi. Uh, not tonight, huh, kid? Aw, oh, Hanky. Get lost, will you?
What do you think, Steve? About what? About Reardon, Foster, McGuire. Maybe I got a theory. Everybody's got the same theory. Crazy cop hater on the loose. Maybe I got another theory. Oh. No. <laughs> Not a theory. An idea. Well, give. Listen. This is not for publication. Okay, okay, it's not for publication. No, 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 I'm serious. The department don't like a guy shooting his mouth off. I told you, it's not for print, Steve. We're only kicking an idea around, right? You talked over this idea with any of your superiors? You mean Lieutenant Burns? Yeah, that's the superior I mean. You don't uh, take an idea to a shrewding like Lieutenant Burns without investigating it. And if you turn anything over, then you go to the guy with all the headaches. So you, uh, you haven't discussed it at all, huh? I've talked about it. Teddy. Hey, uh, honey, bring us another round, will you? you have the time. Read the afternoon papers? I don't read the afternoon papers until the night time. Well, read this afternoon's paper now. You looking for a nice solid beat in uniform on Staten Island? No, sir. No, sir. All of a sudden, no, sir. Cop defies department. You going a little soft in the head? He even had a picture handy, didn't you? No, he, uh, he must have gotten that out of the newspaper morgue. That was the one taken at the police picnic last month. Well, this is the police picnic for this month. Read the story, Curly. Read it out loud. Enunciate carefully, my boy. We sat opposite each other, Detective Steve Corelli and I, and we talked about murder. I think I have an idea who shot those three cops, Corelli said. But it's not the kind of idea that you take to your superiors. That miserable bum. Maybe you'd like to set up your own police department. You pulled one on me, Curly. I thought you were smart. And you set yourself up as a sitting duck. Maybe perfect bait for trapping a cycle. But how could you be so stupid as to bring Teddy into it? Name, address, picture. You set up two sitting ducks. Where are you going? What do you think? Answers. Try the door and it's open for you pronto. My name's Mercer. What's yours? Expecting your boyfriend?
You love Corelli. You'd kill for him, wouldn't you? I mean, if you had to. Okay. So don't be looking at me like that. How about that little kiss right now? and you get dead and I wind up a hero. I pull a thing and you get dead and I wind up with a medal. That's the way you want it? Oh. That talk, bum! Come up! Come up! You'll let me off. We'll stay just the way we are, both of us. Now talk of my own Rear! 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 Rear, and it was a miss out. It was my fault. I messed it all up. Messed it up? I was after McGuire. McGuire! <laughs> J.D., buddy, but Joe Sanchez once said it. Plenty of times the wrong guy gets in. Happened before, it'll happen again. Plenty of times the wrong guy gets in. You paid Dave Foster for McGuire, too! Oh, that was on purpose. It's for protection. Protection? I was after McGuire, but I got it all messed up. And the other way, I figured I'd get a good messed up. With one in the middle, three cops in a row. And then you guys had figured for a nut, a real cop killer. Then the whole slam would be cockeyed and I'd be out for money. Who was to guess that McGuire was my bitch? No, it wasn't mine. It wasn't my idea. It was all hers. Even after, even after I messed it up, she planned the other way. She talked me into. She talked me into. She talked me into it. Was, oh, she talked me into it. Oh, she talked me into it. She made me done. She did. Oh. I wanted out. I wanted out, but he wouldn't let me go. Oh, he knew I wanted out, but he just wouldn't get rid of me. So I got rid of him. You were looking for a cop hater. Well, you found one. I lived with a cop long enough to know. Fruits. Manhunters, haters yourselves. Filthy, stinking, big-fisted pine! All right. All right, let me get to a lawyer. Let's just see how well my legs stand up for a jury. Get this bum out of here. I'm out. 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 87 Squad, Corelli here. Now, calm down a minute. Hold it a second. What's your name? Your name? Marjorie? Marjorie what? Sloan. S-L-O-A-N? All right, now, wait a second. What, where do you live? Where do you live? East or west? East? All right, what happened? You know the guy? All right. All right, hold on. We'll be right over there. Just stay where you are. Willis, come on. There's a guy with his insides hanging out over by the river.